Hello, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to everyone joining this week's COVID-19 uh, live Q&A. Uh, today, I am pleased to be joined by Dr. Sumia Saminathan, our chief scientist, as we will be speaking about COVID-19 booster vaccines, uh, including those new um, Omicron booster vaccines that have been approved in some countries. So if you have questions, as usual, if you're watching us on Twitter, you can use the hashtag AskWHO. If you are watching us on other platforms, we will monitor comment section and I will pass your questions to Dr. Sumia. Um, Dr. Sumia, we've spoken to Maria last week and last couple of weeks and Dr. Tedros have been also saying that we're still seeing too many deaths every week from COVID-19 and a large majority of those, de those deaths happen uh, among people who are unvaccinated. So maybe to start before we go into booster doses, uh, as we know, not everyone even had primary doses. So how many vaccines has WHO approved so far that have been used around the world? Thank you, Alex. And I think what you said is a very sobering reminder to us that this pandemic is not over. In fact, we highlighted that in 2021 uh, or in 2022, up to this uh, point of time, that is August of 2022, one million people have died of COVID. And so I think that people who think that Omicron is very mild and doesn't cause any disease, this is a reminder that the Omicron variant does cause disease and does cause deaths. And that's why it's so important to get vaccinated because that's the best protection we have against this virus. So WHO has approved um, uh, up till now 11 vaccines and given emergency use uh, listing for 11 different vaccines. But of course, around the world, regulatory agencies have also provided in-country regulatory approval for more vaccines. So you will find that in different countries, uh, you know, a variety of vaccines are available. But I think the important point is that all those vaccines that have been, have been approved by WHO and by regulators do work against all of the known variants of the virus. Thank you so much. And in terms of booster doses, uh, which vaccine needs a booster dose according to WHO recommendations? So according to our recommendations, we actually do advise us the first booster, that is uh, the third dose, to be given to everyone over the age of 12 years who have received their primary course of vaccination. And the gap that we advise is four to six months after the second dose or after the last dose. And this is based, of course, on data that shows that there's some amount of waning of immunity at that point of time, and that a third dose really boosts the immune response, both antibodies, but more importantly, the cell-mediated immune response are T cells, the CD4 and CD8 T cells, that's what protects against severe disease and death. And therefore, there are many studies that have shown that giving a third dose, taking the booster, does increase the protection against severe disease, particularly for Omicron, because we know that Omicron is a variant that has been able to escape the neutralizing antibodies that are present in our blood and cause infection. But if you have strong immunity, um, then it doesn't cause severe disease. Please, sorry. Did I so, you? so third dose, everyone over the age of 12, but starting with the highest priority groups, as we've always said from the beginning, that the elderly, those with underlying illnesses or immunosuppressive conditions, uh, pregnant women, health workers, these are the groups to be prioritized. Thank you so much. And uh, WHO recommends only one booster dose because if maybe you can clarify if there is a different recommendation for different groups, because we've seen in some countries that fourth or even fifth dose have been given to some populations. So very recently, SAGE, which is our uh, advisory body on immunizations, they recommended a fourth dose, that is a second booster, for only some group of individuals. These are the people who are, again, at highest risk of getting the infection and highest risk of dying. So again, it includes health workers and pregnant women, but also includes those who are older than, uh, say, 60, but that age cutoff could vary by country. So countries can determine at which age cutoff they want to start giving that fourth dose. Also, people who have immunosuppressed or taking drugs that you know really suppress the immune system, or they have HIV that's not uh, under control with drugs. They're on anti-cancer medications, for example, and those who have severe underlying conditions, asthma, you know, diabetes, heart disease, neurological illnesses. So this select group of people could receive a fourth dose really to boost again 
the pre-existing immunity and give them that extra layer of protection. And again, this is to be given four to six months after the previous dose. Thank you so much. We are already receiving questions from our viewers. Here is the first one from Vivian Sheridan. Did you just say all approved vaccines protect against Omicron? Maybe just to reassure our viewers. Yes, I, I can confirm that. Uh, sometimes people get confused because you hear about people getting the infection despite the fact that they've had vaccines and they've had the booster. Now, so we have to think about infection on the one hand, uh, which Omicron is very good at doing. As I said, it's, it's able to escape our antibodies and our blood and still infect us. But once it infects us, you have that other wall of immunity. You have the T cells, which actually stop it from multiplying too much and stop it from causing the severe lung disease, you know, that makes us end up in the hospital or in the ICU. So I think if you're looking at protection against infection, the vaccines we have today are not perfect at doing that. Protecting against severe disease, yes, 85 to 90 percent protection uh, with most of the vaccines that are being used. Thank you so much. Here is a question from Patti Sarnowski. Uh, thank you for this information. Uh, is this new booster, I believe uh, she is referring to the booster, Omicron booster, mm -hmm. uh, for those who are currently fully vaccinated and double boosted? And maybe before we go into recommendation around it, mm -hmm. maybe we can say what do we know so far about those new Omicron booster vaccines? Right, yes, because this is a very recent development. So, in fact, it was on August 15th that the regulators in the UK first approved uh, what we call a variant adapted vaccine. That's a vaccine that has both the original strain of the virus and it has a piece of the Omicron. And there are two types of um, variant adapted vaccines now. There's, a, there's the one that has the original virus and the BA1 sublineage of Omicron. And there's one that has the original virus and the common part of BA4, BA5. As you know, these are sub-lineages of Omicron. So both have Omicron in them. Right now, we have the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines that have been made uh, with these new uh, bivalent vaccines. That means they have the two antigens in them. And they've been approved in the uh, UK, but also by the European Medicines Agency for Europe and uh, the FDA. And the FDA has approved the one that has the BA45 uh, Omicron variant, whereas the UK and, and Europe have approved the BA1. So there are two different types of vaccines. Now, what they've shown in lab studies is that these bivalent vaccines um, help you to mount a slightly higher antibody response against Omicron. But whether that's going to translate into any kind of clinical efficacy, we don't know because we don't really have those studies. And so time will tell whether we need this type of Omicron specific vaccine. But at the moment, we believe that the original vaccines that we're all using today um, are working very well, as I've just said, and a third dose is important for everyone and a fourth dose for those group of people that I talked about before, the very high risk groups. Thank you so much, Dr. Sumia. Here's a question about when will COVID be considered endemic? And according to that timeline, will COVID-19 vaccines be administered annually like flu vaccines? So these are very good questions. And the fact of the matter is that, as we said at the beginning of the program, we still have approximately 14 to 15,000 people dying every week uh, due to COVID. This is, these are deaths that are reported to WHO as confirmed deaths. And we still have about 5 million new infections every week. So while we have reduced the number of deaths compared to what we were seeing earlier in the pandemic, it's still very, very high. And so we cannot accept this as the condition in which we are going to live and, uh, and say that now it's endemic and we have to live with it. So when WHO says we have to learn to live with this virus, it doesn't mean that we drop all precautions and, and pretend that it's over, or pretend that it doesn't exist. What it means is that we have to build in those day-to-day -day precautions that we have got used to taking and we need to continue to protect ourselves. One other thing I'd like to mention, Alex, there's more and more data coming out that if you get infected and if you get infected again the second and the third time, the risks of developing some type of um, disease later in life is increasing. The risks of diabetes, the risks of cardiovascular diseases, the risk of neurological diseases. Somehow this virus is causing, is setting up inflammation in our body, 
which may be leading to some of these um, these um, you know other health conditions and so i think we should do everything we can to protect ourselves and others from getting infected which means you know test yourself if you're uh, or go get tested if you have symptoms wear a mask when you're in crowded indoor settings or where you can't distance from people try and meet people outdoors as much as possible improve ventilation in offices and homes and most importantly keep up to date with vaccination thank you so much we have a next question from kimberly krapik um is it permissible to get third booster or a booster dose if you have only received one dose previously so there are a couple of vaccines that started off as a single dose vaccine in fact we we still have the cancino vaccine which is a, a single dose as well as a jnj which is used in some countries a single dose yes we do recommend a booster a second dose because for exactly the same reason that with omicron you actually need a higher level of antibodies um and you also need a boost to your immune system um to to get that full level of protection so a booster is recommended even for those people who got the first um, a single dose vaccine thank you so much um we another question is from sara downs watching us on facebook how soon after three doses plus covid infection should people over 65 get their fourth dose maybe we can clarify who's position whether the fourth dose is needed and if yeah. yes for which populations so the fourth dose i think varies depending on the country where you live some countries have policies and some still don't have policies and and who has made a, a, a recommendation but it's for countries to adopt that policy um so if three doses plus a natural infection probably means you have very good immunity it's what we call hybrid immunity and um you don't need a booster for at least 4 to 6 months you know after the last one or the last episode of infection um there was a previous question about the annual boosters which i forgot to answer and this is a question that we don't know the answer to as yet whether it's going to be like flu an annual booster or whether this three dose schedule that we've all taken now whether that will protect us for longer and maybe we don't all need boosters every year maybe it's such a subgroup of people for influenza as well we focus on a subgroup of people we know the elderly and children under 5 and pregnant women and health workers are at highest risk of getting influenza so i think we have to wait for the for the data to come in to really say whether we are going to need an annual shot or not thank you so much and here is a question from debandron manzoin i hope i pronounced that well how long after you had covid infection can you get a booster dose so again it's the 4 to 6 months because that's the time period in which we know that um the immune responses start waning or at least the antibodies start waning um and so that's uh, you know on average it it varies from person to person but the one other thing i'd like to say alex is that you know when we're talking about the future and we're looking at uh, these uh, in the question around annual boosters i think what we want to see is a lot more research a lot more r and d into the kind of vaccines that will not only give broader protection but also longer lasting protection and it's very exciting to see a number of mucosal vaccines nasal vaccines and oral vaccines being developed and we think that a combination of a injectable vaccine and a nasal vaccine for example might give the right uh, protection against infection and against severe disease so there is a lot of research going on now including on pan corona virus vaccines so this field is evolving very rapidly and uh, and we hope that we'll have uh, better vaccines than what we have today even though what we have today is is very good thank you and here is a question from jaya kumar who i think watches us regularly uh kindly confirm is there speaking of research any research carried out to keep vaccine in any temperature depending upon the climate condition which vary differently across the world yeah that's again a great question and it's it's definitely one of the priorities for vaccine researchers because it's so difficult to maintain cold chain particularly the ultra cold chain that some of the mrna vaccines have needed and it's made it very difficult for countries to really roll out these vaccines 
So ideally, we would like vaccines that can be stored at room temperature, but if not, at least in the refrigerator, which is you know more widely available than freezers. So yes, that's a high priority. And in fact, now we're getting RNA vaccines that can be stored in refrigeration. So the technology is improving. The other area of research is different modes of delivery of vaccines. I talked about mucosal vaccines, but there are also people testing these patches so that you just apply a patch. So for people who are afraid of injections or can't take injections or, you know, un there are no health workers to give injections, these other modalities of administering vaccines also could make it much easier for us to roll out large vaccination programs. Thank you so much. Um, another question is when we talk about Omicron boosters, is it crucial to distinguish vaccines targeting the original BA.1 variant from the latest ones, including BA.4 and BA.5? Will there be an ongoing race against the evolution of the virus in terms of vaccine research and development? Again, an excellent, excellent question. So what our technical advisory group um, on vaccine composition advised was to broaden the antigenic composition of vaccines. And this is why companies went ahead to put in the original, a part of the original uh, spike protein, but also they took a part of the Omicron. Uh, and some companies took BA1, some took BA5. Um, others are trying to make vaccines with multiple proteins, um, including those which are not in the spike. So taking the uh, nucleocapsid protein, for example, and adding that, hoping that that will give a broader protection. Um, yes, you know, we could be playing catch up because we know the virus evolves quite rapidly. Of course, Omicron has now been with us since, uh, well, since uh, November of last year. So we've had a long spell of Omicron, but within Omicron, it's been evolving and uh, constantly changing. And even today we were tracking to see uh, BA5 is a, is a dominant variant worldwide, but there are other variants, you know, that we have to keep an eye on. So we will have to, again, as I said, wait and see what these new Omicron adapted vaccines, whether they're really providing a lot of additional benefit or not. And the longer term, solution will be to have a very broadly protective vaccine because otherwise it's going to be difficult to chase every new variant that's emerging. Thank you so much, Dr. Sumya. Next question is again from Sarah. If you were infected with Omicron, should you get the variant, variant adapted vaccine or rather leave it for those who haven't? <laughs> Good question. Um, not a lot of data. So again, a call you know, to all countries to try and generate data, because again, the data is coming in from a handful of countries, mostly. So what we really need to see is in different populations, you know, in Africa and Asia and people who've been exposed to different um, strains, uh, variants, uh, how they are behaving, how long is the immunity lasting in them. So we do need uh, much more data coming from uh, different parts of the world. But for the moment, yes, even if you've had uh, uh, an infection, it's recommended that a booster be taken, uh, a third dose be taken four to six months after the last injection or after the last infection. Thank you so much. Um, Vivian Sheridan says, on one, based on the conversation just now, on one hand, you are saying that antibodies vain after six months, yet on the other, you say, that yearly vaccines may not be needed. This is contradictory. So maybe we can clarify what were you actually saying. Yes. So the primary goal of vaccination here is to prevent severe disease. It would be ideal to also prevent infection. We now know that high levels of neutralizing antibodies correlate with protection against infection. This is why immediately after taking a shot, taking the booster, you're protected against infection. But within about three to four months, the antibodies go down in the blood and you can get infected. But the protection against severe disease actually lasts much longer. We're now following up people for over a year and they've, after the third dose, they continue to have high levels of protection against severe disease. Most of the people that we see in um, ICUs very severely ill are people who've not been fully vaccinated. So this is why I was saying that we don't know whether we need an annual vaccine. It's possible that the three dose schedule that we've taken, plus, you know, a lot of us have been exposed to the natural infection as well, has built up enough immunity to last us for longer than that. 
but we can't be sure. So we, we, we will be following the data, tracking the data, and we'll update our guidance as, as we learn more. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question is, if someone receives the first dose and delays the second dose after three to four months, should they repeat the first dose? No, there's no need to repeat. It's fine, Just even if you have had a gap between the two doses. Thank you. Next question from Gabriela Gonzalez, watching us on LinkedIn. Can you share the importance of getting booster shots in relation to the efficacy of the primary series? Ah, that's, again, a great question. Um, but m what we've seen from the studies coming out is that whatever the efficacy of the primary course, which varies, you know, between 70 and 95% against symptomatic infection, a third dose actually helps to boost that uh, protection against severe disease again. And again, with, you know, in the beginning, we were talking about 90, 95% protection with some of the mRNA vaccines. But when Omicron came along, this changed because all of the, you know, the vaccine effectiveness, actually, we saw it dropping. But the good thing is with the booster, it goes back again and it stays then at a sustained level, you know, for several, several uh, months following that, at least for about 8 to 12 months. So I think it's uh, the message is that, you know, we need to take that. But I do, I do want to say there are people around the world who've still not taken their primary course for whatever reason. We were looking at the data and we find that, you know, only 18% of people living in Africa have completed their primary course. So we still have 82% of people and a large number of them are health workers and the elderly. They're very vulnerable. So really, we have many, many countries which uh, in which people have not received their primary course. And, you know, WHO is working with partners on the ground, including UNICEF um, and, and many other partners and civil society to really make sure that people get their primary course of vaccination first. Thank you so much, Dr. Sumi. Actually, that was my next question to ask how many people are currently not mm -hmm. vaccinated and how many don't have access. And it was in particular about vulnerable populations, mm -hmm. but I think you answer and that question. And maybe before we close, here is a question from a parent uh, saying that her daughter is three years old. Does she need a vaccine? Uh, her teacher recommended it, but I am afraid. Well, again, the um, vaccination policy for children varies from country to country, and it also varies by vaccine. And um, there are countries in which vaccines are now recommended for um, babies and children above the age of six months, but not in all countries. So depending on what, uh, where you live, if your country has a guideline and your doctor is recommending your child get the vaccine, you can go ahead because they have been proven to be quite safe in children as well as in adults. And um, there is no harm. It's good to protect your child uh, against infection, even though we know that, you know, children are at much lower risk of developing severe disease. It's rare, but it does happen rarely. And so if, if, you, if you have access to the vaccine, your doctor is recommending it, please do go ahead. Thank you so much, Dr. Sumia. Thank you for your time. Uh, I thank all our viewers for their questions, especially those watching us from Kenya, Mexico, the US, Bangladesh, Poland, Angola, Pakistan, Nepal, Afghanistan, the UK, Tanzania, Burkina Faso, Sierra Leone, Peru, South Africa, Colombia, and many others. Uh, thank you. And you've heard Dr. Sumia. Please uh, make sure you're up to date to your, with your vaccinations, including a booster dose, and also continue with other preventative measures as COVID is not over. So protect yourself and your loved ones. Until next week, follow our social media channels for updates or our website and stay safe. Goodbye. Bye-bye.